sciences and the arts. The one group was until recently predominantly raw, teonal and indebted to knowledge, while the other was predominantly irrational and hence indebted to the acceptance of faith. It has become evident that both manifest. 529. Summary. Signs of what we have called irrationality. This, too, is a guarantee that the aperspective thou theme is becoming an aperspectival reality. 2. Daily life. The new consciousness which was anticipated and first took shape in the creations of artists, thinkers, and scientists will not be fully valid so long as it is not lived in daily life. What form can it take? It will take its own necessary course. Yet, the confusion of the present situation requires a certain readiness, open-mindedness, and cooperation of each individual. It will happen of its own accord since the structure of the new mode of real. Ization has begun to manifest itself with an undeniable intensity in the most diverse areas of our lives. But each individual's attitude and mode of behavior can ensure that the process consolidating the new consciousness can occur without a detour. Through a possible catastrophe, there have been enough teachers, we have an countered them in the course of the foregoing pages as the precursors of the new consciousness. So also are the latent teachers at work, the trustees of the reflected radiance of primordial wisdom. It is equally evident that in time the new structure must infuse the public con. She is this with its strength. The foundations of our thinking are already changed and restructured by events, and no one can escape the restructuration for too long. Imperceptibly the new structure will acquire validity for all as a matter of course. Those who do not accept it and persist in the old will be left aside in the course of the Next generations, the final efforts toward survival by the various forms of syncretism were surpassed by the efficient mental consciousness potency of Christianity. Ow! Into an increased technologization and a false application of time to technology. The deficient mental structure, rational consciousness, will dig its own grave. It will be surpassed by a more intensified Christianity, by the integral consciousness. This is not a prophecy but a presentation of a natural unfolding vividly manifest in the Spanish-Mexican and Swiss-Austrian examples cited earlier, pp. 5f, 8, and 273. The immense processes of transformation like those taking place today, and the far and deep-reaching mutations that have been occurring for generations and extend into the present, are neither accidental nor explicable in ontological excess, potential or sociological terms. They are latent in origin, they are always back leaps so to speak, into the already ever-present future. This is the way in which origin, but ding and unfolding in space and time, emerges on Earth and in our daily lives. The divine spiritual source and future of that which appears to us as an event ought never be forgotten when attempts are made at mere explanation and origin, from which every moment of our lives draws its sustenance, is by nature divine and spiritual. Anyone who denies this denies himself, and there is today a considerable number who do. 
those who do not deny but rather affirm it in their open-mindedness and Simplicity are already the co-creators of a perspectivity, of the integral consciousness. Structure. This is founded on the emergent consciousness and on the transparency of the whole. Once only did the disciples of Christ perceive his transfiguration. This singular diaphanity of the world on earth, this unique manifestation of spiritual Power is not a past event. The annual celebration of Pentecost, among other events, evidences this. Regarded historically, humanity is perhaps living in the three-day, 530, daily life, period of descent into hell. Have we passed through this descent in the events of the first half of our century? However this may be, in those days only Christ's followers could see his transfiguration, but one day it will be the larger community. It is not accidental that the sense for transparency is erupting everywhere. What does all of this have to do with daily life? Something decisive, since what? is emerging in the greater context must be concurrently co-prepared in the lesser. This does not mean that it is the number of those who realize and live the new that is. Decisive. Decisive is the intensity with which the individuals live the new. Anyone with a sense of detachment from himself also gains a detachment. From the world, including a sense of tolerance. Today everyone is in a position to achieve this within the scope of his possibilities. Everyone has the means today to achieve self-transparency and to give an account of the conditions, temporal limits, and the limitations of his feelings, thought, and actions. Everyone today can become Aware of the various temporal forms which all point to origin, and everyone can experience timelessness in the union of conjugal love, the timelessness of nightly deep sleep, the experience of rhythmic complementarity of natural TM porosity, which unites him in every heartbeat and rhythmic breath with the courses of the universe, and everyone can employ measured time. The magic, mythical, and men. Tall structures may, in other words, become transparent, particularly in their ever. Valid effectualities is our co This is a beginning if only because the individual learns to see himself as a whole of the interrelationship and interplay of magic unity, mythical complementarity, and mental conceptuality and purposefulness. Only as a whole man is man in a position to perceive the whole. But does not our life in the factory and the office, the senselessness of our Believers today, automation, mechanization, and technologization stand in the way. On the contrary, all the more clearly will the false form of time fire up to the evidence. As expressed in motoricity and the scramble for worthless, good, and the like which must be overcome, our environment, the factories and offices, is our own creation. And we have allowed the formless to be employed to be imposed on us by the empty mechanism. Such an environment is changed to the extent that we are able to realize our task. And for this everyone has the requisite leisure and sense of obliga. Eon, between the hours of learning and living in bedtime there are many hours to be used wisely, going off to the superficial gain of becoming, cultured, or learned. The 
hours and days are to be spent not only purposively but also mean. What is today called? Free time must not be squandered literally but then. of the confusion in our daily lives and actions, each interception of anxiety, each achieved grain of certainty, each distanciation from oneself, regardless of how slight, each discarded prejudice and resentment, these are necessary achievements in order to establish the new reality and to obtain for each and all a sense of meaningfulness. Everyone is free to achieve this. Whoever gambles away this freedom has gambled and lost his life and death. What of the millions who remain deaf? Their joys, power and possession will dwindle over the coming years, either owing to their false and destructive use. Whereby these goods, destroy each other, or to the restructuring of consciousness, which unmasks the unimportance of these false values. Such unmasking will rob many of their material pseudo-security and place on them social demands to which they cannot adequately respond. The new attitude will be considered 
consolidated only when the individual can gradually begin to disregard his ego. As long as our thinking is exclusively self-centered, the world will remain fragmented. At best the thou will become visible to the one, but never the whole. The danger today of ego isolation and ego loss, indeed ego, side, has been discussed above, page 153f. Self-isolation is a withdrawal in the face of the masses, the deficient mode of community. In time it will lead to the loss of the ego and to ego side, since the flight back to the masses brings about the destruction and annulment of the one. What is necessary is neither egotism nor egolessness. Egolessness is a deficient regression into magic while a mere egotism is a deficient continuation in the mental rational structure. Only the overcoming of the I, the concomitant overcoming of egolessness and egotism places us in the sphere of ego freedom, of the atron and in transparency. Ego freedom means freedom. From the self, it is not a loss or a denial of the one, not an ego side but an overcoming of ego. Point two consciousness of self was the characteristic of the mental consciousness structure. Freedom from the I is the characteristic of the integral consciousness structure. For someone able to place the whole ahead of his ego in his daily affairs, Al. Though this does not mean a loss of ego, for someone able to act out of ego. Freedom, the world and even his daily life will become transparent. And when this happens, the events and phenomena of his surroundings will set themselves right. Both the social and the technological systems, which result from an over- Emphasized rationality whose deficient emphasis has made them possible will re-structure themselves since they are incongruous with the new mode of realization and its restructuration of the world. 532. Summary. Since this mode of realization excludes a simplistic goal orientation which permits it to function in only a limited area of reality, the surrounding world will be altered in all its aspects as we alter them to correspond to the requirements of our respective consciousness structure. Then will the nightmare of our times come to an end. The false employment of machines whose empty motion and mere motoricity threaten to become autonomous, then it will become apparent that both they and the most recent technology are our physical projections, see page 132, which we can retrieve and master, particularly since there are occasional four-dimensional insect tie-ons present in technology. Fedor Stepan says that the film corresponds to our wish to be released from the three-dimensional gravitational pull. Three yet today it is still a machine that force feeds images. Point four radios capacity to nearly nullify space and time. The temporal telescoping of spatial distances by the airplane. Accelerators such as the cyclotron which are able to release atomic events and reactions, all of these technological achievements can become liberators if their underlying time components become transparent for us. Since it institutes an empty movement, present-day technology is an unmastered time, it is the most impressive example of rational man's failure when faced with his task of resolving the problem of time. Instead of intensifying time, man has quantified
modified it by rational thinking into a cascading motion. This failure, which n, approaches on our daily lives with increasing force, will be successfully corrected when the awareness of the foundations and the true demands of a genuine technology are pioneered. This awareness will restructure technology to the same degree that it is now about to reshape our entire reality. Then, in the most successful realizations, the every day will be an all, i.e., universal day. One, two, three. See in this connection our paper, Die Bier Dimension ALS Zeichen der Neuen Welt Sicht, Die Neue Weltschau Stuttgart, Deutsche Verlagsanstalt, 1952, page 270, also in Enderbewar on Bern, Frank, 21969, page 65, F, and Jessentasge, B, page 215. Where we stated, the new a perspectival age has overcome the rational era just past, an era marked by strong anti religious feeling, and is at the same time the count, our current to the unchristian nihilism of our time. This also implies that the a perspective I age can no longer, and will not be anti religious. Only rational thought is anti religious. Rational thought, by reason of its transparency, will enter into a new and intensified relationship. To religion, we must not forget that the Christian notion of transfiguration is of a trans parent and time free nature. The new age, brought on by the new consciousness struck. Toure will be distinguished by a profoundly Christian religious intensification, but its religiosity will be less emotional. It will be a religiosity of insight and presentiation. We will return to the question of transfiguration in the next section. We would add that in addition to Matt's broad, see text, P. 432, Rene Lassen has striven for a transcendence or surpassal of ego in his characterological psychology via a realization of soy, of the, itself. This process is to enable the individual to acquire new valors, values, to be open vis a vis the universal, and acknowledge the predominance of the spiritual. See René Le Sen, Le Destiny Personnel Paris, Flammarion, 1951. Fedor Stepan, Das Wesen des Films, Ein Soziologisker Versuch, Soziologist 4. 533. Summary. Schung in Unserer Zeit, Leopold von Wies Zoom 75. Gebertstab Dartbracht Kane. Westdeutscher Verlag, 1951 p. 246. 4. Our space here is insufficient for an extended treatment of the film. What is Simpto? Modich of the film, dissolution of static images into movement, demonstrates to what? Extend it as a temporic attempt. The possibilities of film even today have not been suffied. Seeably recognized, even where it has been utilized to invert or suspend the sequence or course of events by means of montage. All such manipulations of time are still merely 
experimental. In this regard, several remarks by Sergey M. Eisenstein are revealing. One is that montage ought not to be of the kind employed by Griffith and the American film, i.e., merely tempo and a means for sequencing or stringing together, but as potential. Montage able to burst the confines of the four-sided cage of the frame, the spatial. Construct and Via montage impulses between individual montage sequences, explode. The conflict of action or plot. Thus the time element is here still misused. Time is an explosion. As so frequently happens, the negative, destructive aspect comes to the fore at the outset. Even in the case of experiments with film, a phenomenon we have repeatedly encountered, we should recall the initial negative effects of atomic physics, of the psychic inflation threatening psychoanalysis, of the shattering of space and paint, in, and of the dadaistic dissolution of language in poetry. This phenomenon might well be described as a process of creative destruction, as J. A. Schumpeter has called it. C. S. M. Eisenstein's last book, film formed 1948, from which excerpts were published, say. Reali and Sight and Sound 19, new series, 7th November, 1950 pp. 294 to 297, and Joseph A. Schumpeter, Capitalismus, Socialismus and Democracy Burn, Frank, 21,950 p. 134, 534, 11. The Twofold Task. What is done today in the name of art is impotence and untruth. This includes music. After Wagner as well as painting after Manet, Cezanne, Label, and Menzel. Where do we find the great personages who could justify the claim that there is an art of inescapable, fated necessity? Let us seek the self-evident and requisite task awaiting such art. These sentences were written in 1917 by Oswald Spengler and remained unchanged in the second edition of 1922. One is his remarks in other contexts show they do not pertain only to the arts. Today, a generation later, we no longer need to seek the great personages. How dated this term sounds. Those who each in his own area, have begun to change our world conception into a new world perception have been allowed to speak in the preceding chapters. Nor do we need to seek any longer new tasks. The self-evident and requisite task awaiting us is now clear. It is unmistakable. The Obvious consequence of all the temporic efforts and inceptions of the last five gen. Orations. It is a necessary task since without it we would give ourselves up, rather, than achieving what has been given us to do. Since Spengler did not discern a task either for the arts or for the other areas of our lives, he wrote off the West. Nevertheless, although we are in a similar, if not more catastrophic post-war situation than Spengler, who had a precursor in the Wagner of the Twilight of the Gods, and a successor in the Alfred Weber of the Fourth Man, to it has befallen our generation to perceive and resolve the task entrusted to us. Then as now, our situation is fraught with danger since we are confronted by a twofold task. To the extent that the task is compelling, 
The danger is also increased. If we fail to fulfill the task, we abandon ourselves. Throughout the preceding discussion, we have constantly indicated the possibility of this surrender. The eperspectival world is not yet consolidated in every thing is still in flux. Above all, the modern addiction to novelty, ultramodernism, the 535, the twofold task, rejection of heritage, of tradition in the best sense of the word, do not belong to it. On the contrary, the first part of our study should have demonstrated that the in sightful recognition of our foundations, which modernists wish to discard absolutely, are of decisive importance. It will depend on us whether the problem of a perspectival time is resolved successfully, or whether it is misunderstood in terms of the deficient, rationalistic mentality. A further rationalization of time would lead to a general atomization, whereas the acronization of time would transcend the contemporary situation toward constitution and consolidation of the efficient new consciousness structure. If we surrender to the destructive deficient powers, if we ascribe to rationality a character of exclusive validity, if we continue to measure time with inappropriate measure, then we shall have indulged in mismeasurement, a hubris beer mesin equals, mismeasure, vermesin.